Hello, everyone. This is Shen Sang Help on In Focus. In preparation for the future post fossil fuel era, the Middle East nations are seeking ways to diversify their industry. On the back of their vigorous efforts to improve the environment and build infrastructure, these countries are now enjoying a second economic boom. Back in Korea, there are growing voices urging that we pay greater attention to these Middle East nations. On today's In Focus, we will take a close look at the current situation in the Middle East and its expected impact on the Korean economy. For today's discussion, we have two expert guests in the studio. Sitting on my right is Professor So Jung Min from Hangul University of Foreign Studies. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you for having me here. Mm -hmm. And sitting on my left is Professor Kim Jung Gwan from Tongguk University. Thank Welcome to our program. Thank you. Well, let's start today's discussion. Well, these days, the uh, Middle East nations draw uh, huge attention from the international community. In particular, economically, they became uh, very important because they are emerging as a new uh, the market in the world. So I want to know the, uh, the details. What's happening over there, Professor Kim? So, actually, the, this you know, issue is, uh, is prevalent in, in the world. The, the background development in the Middle East is coming from the world oil prices. Mm -hmm. This soaring six times from uh, 2002 after the invasion of America to Iraq. It's a, for almost 10 years now, the price of oil of Dubai is a two, no, no, $130 around. Now today it's $120.5. $130 per barrel. Yeah, per barrel yes. just last, mm. last week. Yeah, it increased to, uh, Crude oil price brought more money to the Middle East, especially for the GCC uh, regions, once again turning into a uh, land of opportunities. So actually, the uh, Gulf oil producing countries have accumulated huge oil prices, as I told you, since 2002, and uh, that enormous oil wars in the economy and the social development project as that prepared for the post-oil era and also enhanced the public welfare to concrete uh, social stabilities. And secondly, after European economic crisis, the fuel, the, uh, the fund, the left from Europe that accumulated and uh, the flock to the Middle East market and the illegal to surge it. So Middle East, the large oil investment and orders. And thirdly, also result from Middle East countries, the new schemes and uh, policy to the uh, interest in the industrial diversification. Mm. Yes. Yes, uh, as Professor Kim explained, uh, certainly these countries try to achieve the, uh, mm. their economic goal through the industrial diversification. By the way, Professor Sir, what is it? What is the industrial diversification? Mm -hmm. So actually, you know, some almost all Middle Eastern countries has realized that you know they cannot survive in the long run, mm -hmm. some the, you know, depending on oil. So now they, they are preparing for the future. So especially you know some in the period of the post oil era. So that's why many you know, Arab countries have invested large huge amount of money in various fields of economy. For example, the Saudi the economic development plan by 2014. 2014. Yeah, oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they are planning to invest more than $338 billion mm -hmm. on various you know, fields like you know, so auto parts, metal uh, wrapping, and other home appliances, and then renewable en energy. Also, neighboring country, you know, some Dubai and Abu Dhabi, they also have a lo you know, some future plan. And, uh, the UAE also, you know, have some plan to, you know, invest uh, $300 billion in various parts. So when I was working, you know, as a Middle East correspondent in the region, I met, you know, many, you know, some ministers and prime ministers and even, you know, some of the head of the states in the Arab world. And then they emphasized, you know, some of the, uh, they want to, you know, some the, the attract, invest from Korea in the sector mm -hmm. of the, the manufacturing. Mm. So now this actually is from you know about since uh, 2000. So they have changed their strategic goal to you know some of the manufacturing and other sectors, not 
you know, some say, depending on oil. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, as far as I know, the uh, economic relationship between Korea and Middle East countries has have, has been very special, particularly when Korea uh, faced serious economic difficulties because of forced oil shock. Uh, we could break off those kind of challenges at the time through the uh, strengthening economic cooperation with these nations. Yes, How right. has the, uh, the relationship between Korea and the Middle East countries been evolved for the last uh, several decades? Several decades, yes, Korea and Middle East have been connected economically very tightly. And uh, uh, when we think about uh, sorry, politics, the political sector is very important, but uh, uh, nothing prominent exchanged during the last three decades uh, comparatively. Mm -hmm. And the developed process of Korea relied heavily on the uh, crude oil from Middle East. And also, Middle Eastern countries have a lot of crude oil, and they have oil money. And while they have complete lack of infrastructures to meet the growing demand, and they need a corporate uh, Korea because we have uh, we have experienced successful story so, on construction, and so we 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 grant to Middle East and building the road and uh, railroad infrastructures in 1970s and 1980s. The most of Korean uh, workers attribute. Uh, to the development of infrastructure in the Middle East. Not one country, all over the Middle East from the uh, Gulf area and the North African areas. And the Middle East boom and the solution also, so unemployment problems in Korea. And uh, uh, during the 1990s, around uh, the Southeast Asian uh, nations <coughs> replaced the Korean by the cheaper labor costs. So uh, there was a, Sometimes we have difficulties in the uh, construction sectors, but now Korea seems a new, uh, we have a pick up a new second choice for the uh, uh, new uh, Middle East oil, uh, oil boom with the plant export. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> By the way, uh, Professor So, what is the current uh, the economic relationship between Korea and the Middle East? As far as I know, very recently, uh, if I do not, I'm mm -hmm. wrong, last month, President Im Young Bak paid his official visit to four Middle East countries, mm -hmm. Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, mm -hmm. and United Arab Emirates. Yeah. Uh, well, are there some problem right now in the relationship between Korea and the uh, Middle East countries? Why President pays his official visit to these four nations? So generally speaking, you know, some our relation with the Middle Eastern countries has been, you know, good. Mm -hmm. And then some the economic, especially economic cooperation, you know, some has been uh, going well, uh, but the problem is the Iranian issue. So, if the you know some the any you know some war or any military attack on against Iran, so it means the closure of Hormuz Strait. The Hormuz st st the Strait is very important, you know, in, you know some in terms of the the energy flow mm. in the world. So. Uh, our government wants to guarantee the, the oil supply from the Arab world. So that's why the Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Arab Emirates uh, has pledged uh, to, to, act, to supply oil in any you know, some emergency. Mm -hmm. That's the, one of the most important result of President Lee's visit to mm -hmm. these Arab countries. Mm -hmm. And second, there's another impending issue to, to reopen talk on the FTA with the GCC countries. Mm -hmm. GCC countries means Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Oman, Kuwait, and, and, and UAE, the six you know, oil producing countries. So we, our government has you know, attempted to uh, make you know, FTA, FTA you know, agreement since 2008. Mm -hmm. So the, the discussion has been you know, going uh, not you know, smoothly nowadays. So that's why you know, some President Lee wants to restart uh, this talk. So in terms of the economic cooperation, you know, some our relation with the Middle East you know, some the hasn't been better. You know, some is very good. But mm -hmm. uh, in other sectors like you know, some political cooperation or you know, some cultural exchange, uh, you know, some the, there's some efforts, but you know, some uh, the many people you know, evaluate the, the cooperation in you know, some cultural or political has been very weak. Mm -hmm. Uh, Professor Kim, yeah. uh, as you explained already, the uh, beginning uh, 
the point between Korea and the uh, Middle East countries in economic terms, I mean economic relations, were the construction industry as far as I know. Is it correct? Yes, that's right. And then the, right now uh, uh, there are many uh, reports say, uh, they're saying that Middle East countries are right now, right, are right now enjoying the second the construction, I mean, the uh, boom. Yes. Is it true? I mean, if that is true, certainly it can be another chance for the Korean construction companies. Don't you think so? I, I think so. So, yes, the, the contribution of construction in historical work during the 1980s uh, to the, from Middle East have made a first turn of the Korean economy of today. And the, the growing construction industry in Middle East uh, increased this even now. So, in the year of, uh, uh, 2011 is increased 150 percent uh, compared to the last year, and uh, that equivalent to 115 50 billion dollars. 150 billion dollars. Yes, and uh, as Middle East uh, is one of the Korean constructors' top market, and uh, it will compensate lagging domestic demand. And moreover, Middle Eastern countries' per perception. When Korea has greatly increased with uh, some uh, Korean wave like uh, Hallyu and K-pop and recently and other diplomatic efforts uh, are also bearing fruit. And uh, Korea should use chance uh, well to improve the relation with, for, especially for the domestic economy. And actually we need to remember even last year Korea has not only construction but uh, an automobile export uh, 45.3 billion dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, shipbuilding is 56.5 dollars, so 5 billion dollars, and semiconductor sector also more than 60 billion dollars. All is, is except for the construction sectors. I mm. see. Uh, but along with the construction industry, I mean, uh, uh, there have been uh, increasing demand on the uh, high-tech plants from these countries. Mm -hmm. High-tech, uh, the plants include the uh, nuclear plants projects and uh, petrochemical and desalination de uh, plants. Uh, well, I think these areas are also are a kind of some the sectors of industry which our producers can participate in. Is it true? Still, uh, you know, some the, our, our, you know, some of the construction companies uh, has been the number one, you know, some of the uh, the uh, the participants in various projects in the uh, the what the, the electronic producing or you know some and then you know some petrochemical the plants or you know, the you know factories uh, other areas and then uh, the prop the the most important thing we should you know some remember. So if you look at the, you know, some of the basic, you know, some the main reason behind the current political change in the Arab world, mm. uh, the, there is, you know, some of the fast, you know, rapid increase of population. Mm -hmm. So, and for example, you know, when I went to Egypt in 1992, the population of Egypt was uh, the 53 million. Mm -hmm. now, 53 million? Yes, now, now 2011, the Egyptian Egypt population is now 82 million. Wow. 82. Yes, Saudi Arabia is not that rich country nowadays because, you know, so, uh, nowadays Saudi Arabia, you know, GDP per capita is almost $21,000. 21, almost similar to similar that to, of yeah. Korea. I see. Mm -hmm. And then a long time ago, you know, for example, two, two, 20 years ago, you know, Saudi Arabia is very rich. But at that time, the population of Saudi Arabia less than 10 million. Now the population of Saudi Arabia is 27 million. Mm -hmm. 27 million, wow. So it means well, you know, some, there's a huge demand of the you know, electric power plant, desalination products, and other petrochemical plants. So there's a, there should be a very you know, some, the rapid growth of, the, you know, in, of these sectors. Mm -hmm. So it means it's very good news to our you know, some constructors. Uh, and then, but the one, one thing we should know but this area, even though this is very high, highly technology, high technology, you know, some the concentrated field, the added value is not that high. Mm. Means what? You know, so if we want the, you know, some project of, you know, some the ele electronic, you know, some the, the what, power plant, ten billion dollars of project, but you know, so actually, you know, we can get, you know, some about fifty, 
the $50 million of profit. Mm. So it's a value add, added value is not that high. high. But in, the, in other areas like, you know, some military production, military, you know, some arms sale or energy, you know, some developments and service area, that mm -hmm. these areas are very you know, highly, you know, some value added. But in these areas, we are very weak to, you know, some get contracts in mm. these areas. So this area also we have, you know, put a lot of you know, interest on it and, uh, you know, some, the government should have, you know, some, some very long, you know, future plan to, you know, some de develop these plan for our companies. I see. Well, the uh, Professor Kim, by the yeah. way, environmental industry is another industry uh, which the, uh, these nations have keen interest in. So certainly uh, it can be another very attractive sector of industry for the Korean the, uh, producers. So don't you think so? Yes, so I quietly agree with you and listen to the Korean company participants in this environmental industry project made. I think that is a winning formula. So we, they can benefit so Middle Eastern countries by providing experience and expertise in implementing their development schemes, and in return, they get new business opportunity. As the professor told, uh, now they have, they, their uh, population quite increased, uh, increases than um, before, so they need uh, job creation. And uh, the rapid, also, the rapid changes in climate has, in fact, uh, increased in the, uh, also uh, international efforts to secure the water resources and, and solve the air pollution problems. And while Middle East and uh, uh, North Africa has also uh, enough energy, uh, natural energy, and the lack of related uh, environment technologies. Mm -hmm. So Middle Eastern countries have recently increased investment in the environmental uh, infrastructures, and also and Korean Environment Industry and Technology Institute and the business line has seeking help more Korean uh, relation with the Middle East and uh, environment sectors together. I see. I mean, they will, will get a fruitful, fruitful result. I yeah. see. So certainly uh, these countries could be a kind of some, the, uh, one of the most attractive places for, for Korea, right? And then yes. We can be a very important uh, partners for each other, I think. Uh, by the way, I think the, uh, when you think about the relationship between nations, mm -hmm. we have to think about people's perception sure. to each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I wonder how, what kind of perception do they have to, about Korea? Uh, in our media, some, the, the, you know, some, we haven't you know, reflected you know, some very exact sentiment of the Arab people toward us. You know, I've been in the Middle East 12, 12 years, mm. so I have met many people there. So, but there's, you know, very, you know, some the positive, you know, some the, the image of Korea because, you know, some the most of, you know, some Middle Eastern people are, well, envy our you know, political and economic development in a very short period of time. Mm. And then many countries want to learn Korean experiment, you know, experience to apply their, you know, some economic and polit political development. For example, you know, some the king of Saudi Arabia, Abdullah, he said, you know, so when he, you know, some he became the king in 2008, he mentioned look east, not just look the west. <laughs> so you know, some the, the king of the Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia also mentioned, you know, the cases or case of Korea to learn something. And then, economically speaking, you know, some days is very good. But there, what, there's one, you know, some negative, you know, some image toward Korea. So many, you know, Arab, you know, people now these days are started to looking at Korea as a, the economy animal. All right. Yeah. Yes. You know what they say is, you know, Korea is just you know, wants to wants to seek money mm -hmm. in that reason. So it means what, you know, some the we have a very, you know, some long and very active the personal exchanges in the se especially in the in in the sector of culture mm -hmm. so and nowadays you know, Arab people you know some they ask us to you know some boost our you know some mutual understanding between the two you know some two country and and the region okay then um, time is very limited so I'd like to uh, give the this question to both of you actually 
uh, considering all discussion uh, we ha we have today, um, the these I mean, Middle East countries are very important. So we have to uh, I mean, step up our relationship mm -hmm. uh, between the two more. So what kind of efforts do you think uh, we should make? I mean, at the government level and the people's level. And actually, sir, I, many times I, I insisted, sir, our government sir, encouraged the Korean company to achievement in this region. That one time, continuously, the government officials consider office, uh, official tax break and also uh, some other benefits to Korean workers or uh, expatriates in the Middle East. And uh, they could they could get the uh, actual uh, potential incentive from the government, uh, some regulation. And uh, also, so for the last three, 30 years, we studied the uh, Middle East very lonely and without support from government from any other place. They don't, they don't in interest in our studies uh, around on the Middle East and Islam. So this is the right time, actually. One, almost one million Middle East, uh, Middle East uh, uh, immigrant in Korea, and, or so, not exactly Middle East, the uh, Islamic religion. So it's the time we are interested in the people from the Middle East and Islamic religion, and also uh, we, are intra we are support to the people also, and exchange the cultural and ex educational level. I see. Thank you, Professor. Yes, in a nutshell, you know, some we have been, we have focused on you know some the economic relations right. with the, with the Middle East. So nowadays, you know, we should build up you know some the uh, the strategic partnership with the you know some, with each country. What I mean, so uh, because there's a lot of you know diversities among countries. So you know some bilateral the the strategic relationship with each countries in the in the world in the Arab world. And then you know so strategic means strategic strategic includes everything. You know, not only you know economic but also you know politics, culture, political, cultural, military and in every areas of the relationship. So this is you know some the right time to change our you know focus on the Middle East to in, include all kinds of the human exchanges. I see. So, uh, well, I would like to uh, give the final question to both of you. So, based on our discussion, I got an impression that the future relationship between Korea and Middle East countries could be okay. Uh, yes. Do you think? Do you agree with my opinion? Sure, sure. You know, some we need each other. Mm. It means what well, yeah, our relationship would be very reciprocal. Mm. So you know, some Middle Eastern countries have 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 a lot of you know natural resources, and but you know, some they lack of you know some the technologies and human resources. But you know, <coughs> in vice versa, Korea uh, Korea has a you know, huge you know, capacity of you know some technology and human you know some the resources. So we can exchange to boost. You know some the both you know some the the areas both countries in terms of economy politics and culture. I see. How about you, Professor? Yes, uh, I, I underline that as a Middle East has been a cash cow in the respect of the economy and will good uh, will go good partner in future and. Uh, uh, already we understand a lot uh, after t 2000 we have we have information about Islam and Islamic religion and. Uh, uh, now it's time to exchange very uh, uh, in the regular base and uh, on the government support and the between relation government to government and uh, between relation to cultural sector to sort cultural sectors and they are very uh, familiar to each other I think and we have already uh, a lot of old history the trade relationship and the human relationship so I think that between two con two regions is the is more prosperous and is bright, I think. Well, the, um, thank you very much, Professor Kim Chung Kwan from Tongguk University, yes. and then Professor Seo Jung Min from Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. Well, this is all for today's uh, discussion. And actually, uh, well, I, I have to uh, say this um, today. Well, this has been the last episode of In Focus. So uh, I want to express my appreciation to each individual viewers on behalf of all staffs who have uh, the, uh, participated in producing the, this program in focus. Well, the, uh, 
one thing which I want to have is that we will continue, make every effort to make a better program. Well, this has been Shin Sang Health for In Focus, and goodbye.